Hello, everyone. Uh, this is Joel McKelvey, and thank you for all of you who've, uh, who've joined. We really appreciate you spending some time with us today. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about Flash Advantage in the context of virtualization. And for uh, those of you who are familiar with Pure, uh, we're obviously we're a storage company, so I'm going to talk about the storage aspects of how, how Flash storage really impacts and improves virtualization in your data center environment. So let's get started. Um, but before we get started, feel free to uh, ask questions at the end of this. That'd be great. Um, or you can reach out to me um, via email or Twitter if you'd like, and uh, we'll be able to answer those questions a little bit more directly. So feel free to reach out to me in either one of those ways if that's what you'd like. So uh, those who do virtualization, and I hope you all do, uh, we know that it's increasingly popular. Uh, starting around five years ago, there's just, well, maybe seven now. There's been just a flood of virtualization in all our data centers, and we do it for very valid reasons, right? We consolidate, we optimize, we standardize, particularly around VMware, although not only around VMware, to provide a much more efficient data center. Virtualization has incredible benefits, and the 98 plus percent of all workloads that are now virtualized in the world, or companies that are using virtualization in the world, um, know that, and it's it's really important. And again, the bulk of that is VMware focused. In this session, I'm going to talk primarily about VMware as a result. But uh, for those of you listening, you should be aware that it's not just VMware that's supported by Pure Storage. Uh, we also support uh, Microsoft Hyper-V, KVM, and the virtualization platform of your choice. Um, we're very flexible in that way. But virtualization is really important to us as an industry. And the promise of virtualization has really paid off for those businesses which have deployed it in their IT environments. But virtualization right now is constrained. And it's constrained to about, uh, depending on who you ask uh, at VMware or other companies, to about 60 to 80% of all workloads. So there are between 20 and 40% of all workloads not currently virtualized. And if you ask companies that haven't virtualized workloads, why they're not fully virtualized, there's a, a number of reasons. Um, one of them is that they're using legacy non-x86 workloads, and so they simply can't be virtualized using a, a VMR or other sort of equivalent virtualization uh, tools. But the biggest one is really performance and reliability of the virtualized infrastructure. So if you're running some uh, big resource-hungry application or workload, you may not virtualize it because you're really worried about that performance and it's critical to your business that it continues to run. So you keep it running in the way that you've had it. Um, other reasons for lack of virtualization is that it can make things more complex, it can be hard to manage, um, it changes operationally how your business functions, um, and you have to pay for it, right? Although there are benefits, it can cost, particularly if you're running an aggressive workload that's gonna require a lot of virtual CPUs or, uh, or a lot of physical CPUs. And so what we found is that initially with virtualization, the biggest constraint to going fully virtualized was RAM in hosts. This was about four or five years ago when the big server vendors started putting, uh, particularly Cisco around UCS, started putting large amounts of RAM into those hosts. Currently, the bottleneck in a virtualized environment is typically storage. And it has to do not just with storage performance um, from, an, uh, from a raw IOPS perspective, but also latency. Um, having applications wait for shared storage. And as a result, if you go to VMworld or other virtualization type events, you'll see a preponderance of storage-based companies there hawking their wares in an attempt to make virtualization function better. And storage fundamentally today is that limiting bottlenecked part of virtualization. And the good news is that the revolution in IT that comes with all flash shared storage has really changed how, how storage is done in a virtualized environment. As a result, you'll see um, here from Gartner, companies are very, very rapidly adopting all flash storage. And part of it is just because it's simply better in a virtualized environment. What this chart shows is the speed with which all flash storage is encroaching on all external storage. Um, and the idea is by 2019, essentially solid state arrays or, or flash-based storage is gonna have a huge percentage of total flash market share. Um, but what's really interesting about that is today, 
those critical workloads, the ones that people are the most worried about putting onto shared storage or virtualizing are the ones that are very quickly going to flash. And uh, at Pure, we, we well recognize the benefits of flash in those environments. It's core to our business. If you ask Gartner, who's, who's really that leader in the all flash storage business, particularly in a virtualized environment, Pure is clearly positioned as that leader. Um, IDC also agrees that, uh, that Pure is really doing a, a bang up job for those, those companies who are looking at virtualizing on shared storage, um, critical workloads, just in general. So that's a little bit about us, but instead, about, instead of that, after setting the stage about why virtualization and storage are interlinked, talking a little bit about Pure, I want you to think a little bit about your environments, right? What if you could take your virtualization and get it to that 100% virtualization state? What sort of efficiencies would that include? Um, how could you uh, save money, reduce footprint, uh, make your virtualization environment that much more powerful and easy to manage? What if you could consolidate everything down onto less infrastructure? So even if it's all virtualized, you know, we frequently see IT departments which have uh, silos of virtualization or huge footprints associated with shared storage for virtualization, particularly those who are still running spinning disk. Um, and so I would ask you if you could consolidate down onto one or two or three storage systems instead of uh, racks and racks of storage, what, what sort of efficiencies would that consolidation provide you? If you could automate common processes, if you could provide self-service IT to your users or your internal or external customers, you know, this is really the, the holy grail of virtualization. Um, not every company is gonna go all the way in every part of this vision, but if you can think of how much you can move the needle towards 100% virtualized, 100% consolidated, 100% automated, all the way to self-service, you know, that is really transformational for your IT department, and it can really accelerate the speed with which your business delivers new products or new services out to your customers, and can become a real, a real critical competitive advantage. So pure storage and flash storage in general remove those constraints in the virtualized data center by eliminating bottlenecks. And those bottlenecks, as I mentioned earlier, are often about IOPS, that's raw performance, but also latency making sure that, uh, that applications are responsive to your users. Virtual desktops react quickly. Databases can provide the, an the analysis you need rapidly. Um, that, that the response time of uh, a health records application in a medical environment keeps your employees, your doctors and nurses productive. That is very, very powerful uh, for most businesses to be able to get that type of, uh, of latency reduction. Um, a system that can tune itself that can support large numbers of different workloads so that you don't have to tune the storage or the workload to support each other is really important when you consolidate. So uh, flash storage and intelligent flash storage, particularly ours, can really give you that adaptive intelligent architecture so you can put everything on to a single system. And um, at least our storage is fully manageable from within vSphere. So you can use your virtualization tools to manage it. And I'll talk a little bit about some companies that are doing that a little bit later on in this session. Um, furthermore, um, particularly at Pure, we have a proactive and knowledgeable support team that understands VMware, so that when you call us up and you might have a challenge, um, we can assist you. And since we're proactive, if we see something going wrong, we can actually call you um, and tell you that, uh, that we think that there's a configuration that we want you to fix or that something might be uh, on its way to failure and we can, we can bypass any of the problems you might have seen. One of the interesting things about how Pure does storage, just as an aside, is that you can think of, you can think of our support team as two or 3,000 of your peers all running systems from Pure with roughly equivalent sorts of things that you're doing. And we can use the knowledge we have of those other systems to really impact positively your experience. So we'll, we can fingerprint your system, find other systems with roughly equivalent fingerprints, and in the event that those other systems are potentially seeing challenges, we can notify you early and uh, remediate them before they occur. So uh, our support system is really second to none, and I think that's what leads to our, uh, our industry-leading uh, net performer score, which is a measure of who recommends storage to others. And we've, really, we've got an extraordinary number of customers who recommend us to their peers. So I spoke a little bit about managing our, our systems from within vCenter, from vSphere. This is the web client plugin we have offer 
uh, we offer to our customers. Uh, it's for free. It's very easy to install. You simply go into uh, vCenter and point to the array and enter your credentials and it will self-install. But uh, the self-service storage for VMware admins is a really important part of what we provide in a virtualized environment. So for a VMware admin who's used to provisioning storage and putting hosts on that storage and doing it all from within a single pane of glass, our plugin makes that really easy. It also automates a lot of those common tasks so that the admin doesn't have to worry about uh, all the, the nitty gritty details of each of the parts of the things that they're trying to configure. They can simply ask for a VMDK and get it built out and not have to worry about the underlying complexity. Um, we're also heavily integrated with VMware vRealize. Uh, Log Insight gives you additional visibility. We've got a bunch of the vRealize orchestration automation. I'll talk about that later. And we are integrated with Site Recovery Manager as well to make sure that your workloads are protected, that your data is protected, and that you don't go offline. Um, interestingly enough, our policy is not to charge for, for a, any of this software or any of this additional integration. When you purchase our array, you get all of these components um, at no additional cost. For example, with Site Recovery Manager, we provide you with, uh, with native replication. And so uh, you, you go to VMware and you get your Site Recovery Manager license, but there's no additional licensing from Pure. Let me talk a little bit about Site Recovery Manager. So Site Recovery Manager leverages Pure's native replication and snapshotting, which is on our arrays. And in the event of a failure, something goes horribly wrong, um, you use Site Recovery Manager like an automated runbook to vMotion your VMs over to another set of hosts sort of automatically. And um, our array at that second location has got the replicated data and just naturally fails over and you're good, right? So um, it leverages our space efficient local snapshots. What that means is when you are doing the native replication, you don't have to send the full data set. The bandwidth required between the two devices is relatively low. Um, failover is instant. We can do multi-site protection, right? And again, that's all at no additional cost, which I think is really important. I've spoken with a number of customers who have had to decide between licensing native replication on the array or using Site Recovery Manager from the host side. And it becomes sort of a, a cost payoff. Which one do I want to do because I can only afford one? What we do is we take the cost of the replication out of that equation by providing it to you with your, with your array at no additional cost. And that means you're better able to afford the Site Recovery Manager license from VMware, which makes it more usable, which makes your data much better protected. Uh, Securities America is one of our customers that is using uh, VMware with Pure Storage. And, you know, they were really impressed when they first put it in to their platform, which is almost 90% virtualized now. Um, they've got some VMs that really take some, they really take a lot of load, right? And what they saw when they moved over to Pure and our, 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 flat, our all flash platform, was something dramatic, right? If we look at a system that's got hosts in it and networking in it and storage in it, by simply improving the storage performance, they were getting response times that were 1400 times, 1400% 1400 faster. That's unbelievable, right? Uh, that's 14 times faster just by implementing faster storage. And this really goes to what I said earlier about storage being the bottleneck, right? You remove that bottleneck and what you're really doing is unleashing the power of virtualization across the whole data center. They're also getting some phenomenal data reduction on their data set of 4.7 to 1, which is really brings the cost down for them, and they're saving a whole lot of money. So uh, you can find out more about Securities America on our website, purestorage.com. Just click on the customer's link. You can read uh, a lot more about sort of what their workload is like, what they're doing with Pure, and, and, um, and some of the, the additional details here. But I wanted to put this in here just to show you that uh, – that as, as a case of what happens when you take out slow storage or inconsistent storage from your system, the results can be really phenomenal. Now, I mentioned consolidation as sort of that next step. If you've got a, a large degree of virtualization, how do you consolidate everything? Well, traditionally when you consolidated everything onto a single storage system or a single set of infrastructure, what would happen is your more aggressive workloads would override other workloads and you'd be very sad. A classic example of this is VDI which has big boot storms in the morning or uh, recompose storms or virus scan storms in the afternoons, evenings. Um, and that can blow all, away all of your other workloads uh, on your systems when everyone tries to access it at once. Well, the good news is that 
when you have high performance storage, you don't incur that problem anymore because you've got so much performance that all the people accessing it is, is not an issue, right? So um, really consolidation is about putting all your eggs in one basket. And when you do that, you would like an incredibly robust basket. And what we provide at Pure Storage is this greater than five ninths availability where you can consolidate absolutely everything together. And when you think about consolidation, you really do have to think about failure domains what happens if something goes offline? And that goes back to what we were just saying about Site Recovery Manager, right? If you're gonna consolidate everything, you wanna make sure that you can back up and replicate everything. You wanna be able to have a solid failover scenario. And you also want a system that's just truly available even in the event of failure, right? Um, I'm gonna show you some of the things about uh, our resiliency that I think are really second to none in the market from a storage perspective. So. We took an array and we simulated a 5,000 employee company actively working. Uh, we put uh, 1,500 seats of VDI on it, uh, an Oracle database, two SQL databases, an exchange server, and we drove a uh, large amounts of traffic through all of those apps as well as a couple of other sort of ancillary apps at the same time. And we simulated an upgrade. For those of you who don't know, uh, the Pure Storage Flash Array M has non-descriptive upgrades. And so in order to upgrade, for example, the controllers on the system, first you unplug one and you put in a new one. Then you unplug the second one and you put in a second new one. Um, you wanna wait a little while between them to rebalance probably five, 10 minutes <laughs> for them to rebalance. But upgrade is really that simple. And so we simulated upgrades. And so if you follow these little blue lines on the middle of your slide here to see the secondary reboot and the primary reboot, these two uh, controllers, they're both active active from accepting I.O. perspective, but one of them is doing most of the processing. Uh, under load with this simulated 5,000 person environment, pulling out the, uh, the controller, which is not doing the active uh, processing of data, resulted in an essentially no blip in performance. Uh, pulling the entire brain out of the system and having it fail over resulted in uh, yeah, roughly two seconds of latency, which exceeded one millisecond between one and two milliseconds. So what you saw is very briefly, when you pull the brain out of our system, that we blip up to latency that's approximately one-tenth of that of our competitor for two seconds. So we perform exceptionally well in upgrade simulations, and so exceptionally well in actual upgrades that our customers are confident enough to do upgrades in the middle of the day in production load, um, which is something if you're an admin, uh, you start thinking about, uh, maintenance windows in the middle of the night or on weekends. Uh, that's a thing of the past with these systems. You can do the upgrades and maintenance during production hours and your users don't notice. Um, although we did have one company that users noticed they did their upgrade. Um, it was non-disruptive, but they started getting calls from customers saying, it's running a lot faster now. What did you do? They, they said, yeah, about halfway through your workload uh, running, we upgraded the controllers and now it's a whole lot faster. So um, very non-disruptive and a very, very powerful tool. Uh, we also did some very mean things to the array, and I'm showing you that on this slide. Um, uh, on the right-hand side, you can see we're pulling flash storage modules. These are the SSDs or the actual flash itself. Um, I wanted to show those in the simulation. Uh, there's really no impact on this. You can pull those things in and out all day long. Up to two storage modules can be pulled out or fail at a time without any data loss. And when you remove when you remove a module, the system actually attempts to rebuild parity. So if you pull one module and you wait, I don't know, five, 10 minutes for it to rebuild parity, depending on how big the system is, then you can pull another module and it'll rebuild parity. And you can keep pulling modules uh, indefinitely until you run out of controller capacity, at which point, some point when you pull out a module, you'll be pulling out actual data, in which point you, you know, you'll, you'll see some, some uh, issues with performance and data loss. But two guaranteed, we have a proprietary RAID called RAID 3D that lets you pull out at least two uh, without any data loss. And um, certainly you can see from this, this chart here, no performance implications whatsoever. Now we did do a couple of other things. Um, we pulled a fiber channel cable just to see how multipathing works, essentially no blip. Um, and then the NV RAM pool, which I think is the most interesting thing on this chart. Um, we lobotomize the array when we pull the NVRAM. It's a two-stage array where we write to NVRAM and then write down to the flash modules. Um, that, lobotomy, that lobotomy that we gave the array of the NVRAM pull resulted in the biggest uh, performance issue uh, of all of these types of simulations we did. And we 
we burst for a moment above three milliseconds of latency, which uh, is really high for our arrays. Um, and we were at that point for, you know, a few seconds. <laughs> so, um, and, and, and really, when we're running at that latency, we're still running at, you know, a half or a third of most of the systems out there. So, you can really be cruel to a pure storage flash array um, by pulling and plugging and yanking out all sorts of really critical components, and the system survives very, very well. And even in these failure scenarios, uh, you don't lose uh, you don't lose data, you don't lose uh, accessibility to the data, and your performance remains better than most of the systems that you'd be sitting outside when they're not undergoing these types of failure scenarios. So I just wanted to share that, speak to this idea of building a better basket to put your eggs in if you're consolidating everything. You really want something robust under there, and I think that this test proves that the flash array is, is the most robust or at least among the most robust systems you can use for storage with your critical workloads. Now, the third thing I talked about after 100% virtualizing, 100% consolidating is this idea of automating. Um, automating is a non-trivial task for all of us, but we, we get the idea of automation. So uh, from a virtualization integration at Pure Storage, we've built in that, that vCenter plugin I mentioned earlier. That helps automate a lot of common tasks, but you can build a full automated environment using a bunch of different tools. We have a, a well-documented REST API. We've got a number of automation libraries, both in PowerShell and Python, we've pre-written. So if you wanna customize it that way, you can. And we've got a bunch of reference architectures and a lot of information on our site um, that talks about how to make this work in a fully automated environment with tools like VMware's vRealize, but also uh, tools like uh, Cisco's UCS Director, OpenStack, and others, um, really leveraging our REST API. Uh, by the way, uh, you know, a, a significant number, roughly a third of our customers are using that REST API to, to call and manage our arrays. So this is a very, very popular way of managing our systems simply because the systems are easy to use. Um, we've made it easy to do the automation so that it's not this in, incredible costly and time consuming project to get you there. So we know with automation, the customers who are successfully doing it are, are really providing services which are much faster. Their admins are spending less time on rote tasks and more time on strategically impactful tasks. Um, these, this takes away a lot of the user error you might see with common tasks, which are very repetitive. Um, if admins are more effective, admins are actually doing something that requires their brain rather than just their fingers. Everybody's happier, right? Users get what they want, uh, or app owners get what they want faster. Admins are happier, and it's just all around a great idea. So um, if you're looking at that, um, definitely check out our communities page at community.purestorage.com. We've got whole communities of people who are sharing scripts there, um, talking about how they go around through their automation um, tool sets, which ones are most popular. And um, we'll also be at the OpenStack Summit in uh, Austin um, and ongoing OpenStack summits uh, as part of our uh, participation in the OpenStack Foundation in 2016, 2017, and beyond. So uh, look for us there if you're interested in open source versions for orchestration and automation. Uh, to talk a little bit about our VMware vRealize orchestrator tool set, We've built a workflow package with, uh, at this point, it's actually well north of 110 workflows um, using our REST API. Um, and it is available both from us and from VMware that lets you do some really common things in VMware environments. Uh, authentication, hosts and host groups, you can see the list here. It's open source again, like all our software, we're not charging you more for this. It's available to you. You can download it anytime you want from our community page, community.purestorage.com. We've got folks here who are knowledgeable about it and can help you if you have questions um, and uh, an open community of people sharing their experience with, uh, with vRealize. This is a, a really powerful tool set and some of the stuff uh, you can find online, particularly on our site around automating. Um, we've got some good demos online as well. So go to purestorage.com and check out that stuff. So last but not least is enabling this nirvana of self-service IT where uh, users are consumers of IT resources your line of business owners, your app owners, your, uh, your internal users, or external customers are able to just uh, uh, log on to some type of a portal or request some type of automated service and it occurs, right? Um, we find 
when you make IT easy to consume is that more people want to consume it, it's more efficient and it's more powerful. And what this does is a lot of the benefits of automation, your skilled staff can do more strategic things rather than rote things, but also the customer satisfaction or the empowerment of the people who are using uh, your, your self-service IT is very, very powerful. So putting the power back in the hands of the people who are consuming IT makes IT immediately more relevant to them, makes IT immediately more important to them, increases the use and the value of IT, and it's, it makes everybody's life much, much easier. So I want to share with you just a little bit of information about some of our customers who are seeing these types of benefits. Um, here's some of the virtualization successes that we've seen just in brief. Now, again, you can find a lot more information about this on purestorage.com. Just click on the customer link and you can find it. But uh, for example, I, I mentioned that you can manage storage from vCenter, right? Well, at LinkedIn now, the storage that's based on, the, the storage that pure storage is managed by the virtualization team. They can go right into vCenter, manage the storage themselves. You know, they've got an IT staff that's been able to set it up and give it to them. And, the, and that team can just use it to the extent that they need it without having to ask for permission which is really powerful. The storage team is happy because they don't have to deal with all these day-to-day -day tickets, and the, uh, the virtualization team is happy because they get immediate response to everything they need. Workday, which is a, a, an IT uh, a software as a service company doing uh, uh, HR type applications, their developers who also have no storage experience are managing the storage themselves. So that's really powerful. Skullcandy, the headphones and, and uh, you know, X game sports people, based in Park City, Utah, have built uh, a cloud that's got all of their consolidated virtual machines and applications running on 100% flash based on pure storage, right? So they put all of their critical stuff on pure for the performance and for the consolidation capability. They actually started out with a SQL workload that they were really interested in running at a higher performance level. They put it on the array. They saw such benefits, they started putting more and more and more and more things on the array. And eventually they had essentially all their critical apps on pure storage. And it runs all together in one place very, very well. So that's, that's a really classic poster child for consolidating on pure. And Sierra Nevada Brewing Company has got a cloud also of all their key apps, including virtual desktops, but exchange their manufacturing, marketing work, everything all in one place. And so what they've done is they've consolidated it down, they've made it easy to use, and that's power cooling and density savings, obviously, but it's this idea of what the benefits that Sierra Nevada can get out of running it all in one place from a management perspective. They're managing fewer systems with uh, staff that are now able to think about the future of their data center instead of just keeping the lights on. And that's incredibly powerful, their business. Their business bottom line being driven competitively um, by having their virtualization unleashed due to fast shared storage. So I just want to wrap this up here with, uh, with a little bit of guidance on where to go to learn more. You can obviously reach out to me. I gave you my contact information before. But um, I want to make sure that uh, uh, you get a chance to explore a little bit more about what we do with VMware, et cetera. So do go to community.peerstorage.com and, um, and let me know um, on communities. You can reach me or you can reach a bunch of our other experts. But you can also uh, reach out to your peers and talk about how we do integration with some of the best practices, see our knowledge base, et cetera. If you want to learn about a third-party report that, that uh, really describes how to consolidate workloads, and this is where I uh, got the findings that I showed you earlier, then you can go and see that report by ESG, the third-party analyst firm, around consolidating workloads. There's a link here for your, if you're interested. In, and then definitely visit purestorage.com. Uh, for more information. I'm just going to skip to right here and show you my contact info again if you're interested. And again, say thank you very much for taking some time out of your day with us today. Um, and with that, I think we'll go over to some questions. Let me just quickly skip back here and show you these links again and while we answer the questions. Um, so uh, let me know. Great. Thank you, Joel. And so we're going to do the question and answer session now. Please use the chat box function of Zoom, which is on the bottom of your console. Um, and so during the webinar, we actually had one person um, send over a question. So does Peer Storage support hypervisors other than VMware? Yes. Uh, does Peer Storage support hypervisors other than, uh, you know, ESX and the VMware hypervisor set? Uh, absolutely is the answer to that question. I mentioned this briefly early on. Um, we're doing a, a lot and increasingly large amounts of work with Hyper-V and uh, KVM in particular. I mentioned our OpenStack integration. Uh, a lot of that is KVM focused. 
Um, and we're doing some work uh, not just with Hyper-V, but also with some of the Azure uh, work from Microsoft too. Uh, unlike a lot of, uh, a lot of our, uh, let's say, imitators and or competitors, um, we have a very open approach to hypervisors and we're interested in supporting not just more than one, but more than one on a single array, which is a, a, a further consolidating um, beyond sort of just putting all VMware on one array. You can put more than one hypervisor on one array too. Great. That sounds fantastic. Uh, next question. How many virtual servers can you put on a flash array? Uh, wow. Um, how many virtual servers can you put on a flash array? is a very difficult question because it depends entirely on what you mean when you talk about a virtual server. Um, lots is the answer to that question. So let's talk about how many virtual machines you can put on. And we use as a proxy for virtual machines, not virtual servers, but virtual desktops because they tend to be much smaller and you can put a whole bunch of them in one place and it really stresses the scale components. Um, I mean, we can run hundreds of thousands of IOPS worth of virtualized devices, but when you talk about the total number of VMs, uh, we usually do uh, virtual desktops to get that measure. And on a single uh, flash array M70, for example, um, although it exceeds best practices for failure domains, somewhere between 10 and 15,000 in roughly, I'm gonna say uh, 5U <laughs> of storage. So an extraordinarily large amount of, of VMs. Now it's going to really depend on what workloads you're running in those VMs. It's going to really depend on how deduplicatable and compressible those workloads are, what their performance requirements are. So I, I hate to leave you with an answer to that question, which is it depends. But what I do know is that if you reach out to uh, one of our sales teams or something like that, you can just go to the purestorage.com and click on talk to sales. Our teams are capable of sitting with you and talking about your current workloads and giving you a real idea of what it looks like in your environment. So what I would say to you, if you really want to know sort of how that scale works, um, it's going to be a very personal answer. And we have people who are willing to give you, you know, very personal attention to get there. That sounds great. And so it looks like we have one more question. Uh, so does your fast storage impact how vSphere runs? So does our fast storage impact how vSphere runs? Um, yes, is the answer to that question, right? Um, but what we're finding, so I mentioned early on in this webcast, the bottlenecks and the evolution of bottlenecks in a, a VMware virtualized environment. And first it was RAM, right? VMs would run out of RAM. Um, and then we learned to put, uh, we learned how to put a lot of RAM on one of these uh, uh, Intel boxes so that RAM was no longer the bottleneck. We weren't running out of that. Um, and then storage has historically been the bottleneck. Well, when you take uh, engineers know that you can never take a bottleneck out of the system. You simply move it around. <laughs> so when storage is no longer the bottleneck, what is the next bottleneck? And what we're finding the next bottleneck is, is actual code paths in the hypervisor in ESX. And so if you go to VMware's performance laboratories, what you will find is pure storage is running there so that they have fast storage so they can see how to optimize code paths in ESX. Um, um, so in general, you know, ESX starts and its ability to process starts becoming that next bottleneck. VMware has done a great job, however, of, of optimizing ESX code paths. Now, there is one unexpected benefit of running fast storage in a, a virtualized environment that was something that surprised us and the customers who, who are receiving the benefit, um, and that is CPU utilization. So a CPU has a, sort of a, a a buffer before the CPU where it stores up the data that it's going to process before it pushes it through the processor. And uh, there's a certain amount of CPU idle time that takes place if that if the data is, hasn't filled up that buffer. Uh, well, having fast storage means that that buffer can stay full more and therefore the processor is less idle. And we're seeing some improvements of, you know, 25% in CPU utilization because the storage is simply faster, which is uh, a kind of an unexpected waterfall effect for people who are deploying uh, you know, pure storage with their VMware. Great, um, that sounds awesome. So um, thank you, Joel, for your time. Uh, this concludes uh, today's webinar on the Flash Advantage on virtualization. Uh, but if you have any questions or would like to know more, please feel free to reach out to Pure Storage and we will be sending out this recording on demand uh, for you to view whenever you'd like. And you're also welcome, I've put back up my contact information. Feel free to reach out to me on Twitter or email or uh, go to the community.purestorage.com and reach out there.